Okay, so there's our derivatives for arc sine and arc cosine. Arc tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's a little bit different than the other two. But probably the most user friendly out of all of them. The derivative of arc cotangent is easy once you know the derivative of arc tan. And it's negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if you know arc sine, you know arc cosine. If you know arc tan, you know arc uh, cotangent. Uh, arc cosecant and arc secant are where they get a little bit more messy. Uh, arc secant is 1 over. I'm sorry, it's not negative, it's positive. Positive 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And arc cosecant is negative 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Grab the various calculus note sheet and you look right off to the left hand side. We've now finished off all of the derivatives that you need to know. See that? I promise you that you do not need to know a derivative that is not on there right now. The AP exam and Calculus 1 will not require any more derivatives. You're good to go. So, you could just go ahead and memorize those pieces. We're going to start right now. Get a good look at it, and then try to do the rest of the stuff on your own. We now want to find the derivative of the following functions. We start with start with arc cosine of e to the x. What rule do I use to find that derivative? I use the chain rule. Okay, so on the inside, I have e to the x, and on the outside, I have arc cosine of u. Yes, you may write cosine inverse of u. Same thing. What is the derivative of e to the x? What is the derivative of arc cosine of u? One minus u squared. I'm now going to multiply these together. What will I have in the numerator? Negative e to the x over, what happens if I square e to the x? It becomes e to the 2x. Very good. So square root of 1 minus e to the 2x. And that's it. Not too bad, huh? Just got to memorize them. That's it. Not too often mathematics, you got to memorize stuff, right? And most of the time, you know the process, and that's good enough. But when we have differentiation rules, uh, there is some memorization comes in. If you want to learn how to do it from scratch, then you can come in later and we'll show you the proof. And then you can just do it on your own. All right. So uh, this one right here, uh, same thing, chain rule. The inside is 4 minus 2x, and the outside is arctan or tangent inverse of u. Whichever way you want to say it is fine. Just don't say tangent to the negative 1. That's not correct. Derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I'm sorry, in this case, uh, our variable is u. We're using the chain rule, so u squared. Derivative of 4 minus 2x. What do you have in the numerator? If you squared it out, you could add the 1, and you would have a 17 then, right? For this kind of problem, I don't care. Books will leave it in all sorts of different forms. I've seen it expressed like this and other ways. Okay. Flip it over. Four more problems. What's the inside? Outside? Arc sine of u. What's the derivative of arc sine? One minus u squared. What is the derivative of the square root of x? One over two roots of x. 
we multiply them together, what do we get in the numerator? So like I'm going to have a two roots of x. What do you get if you square the root of x? x. We get 1 minus x. Now, I will accept that on the test, but I'm guessing that your book or the AP exam would not leave the answer like that. What do you think it would do? Yeah, because the square root times square root, we can multiply the radicands together. So you get 1 over 2 roots of 2 minus, oh, I'm sorry, it's an x. So we have uh, 2 times the square root of x minus x squared. That's probably how they would write it. Hard to know for sure. Next one, uh, what rule do I start setting up? Product, why? Yeah, the x times. So I've got product. What's the derivative of x? 1 times the natural log of arc cotangent plus or minus plus uh, and then I have an x times the derivative of natural log of arc cotan chain good the derivative natural log of u? Derivative of arc cotan. So you multiply those together, you get a negative 1 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you get 1 plus x squared times arc cotangent of x. So I think that um, all that would change in this situation for your answer would be natural log of the arc cotangent of x minus, excuse me, x over 1 plus x squared arc cotangent of x. So I chose to put the minus sign out front. It doesn't look pretty. No, I, I, I generally don't see that in these situations. If Putting a common denominator combined into one fraction would allow you to maybe combine some like terms or something might cancel. Then you might want to consider doing that. Again, you don't know how the answer will be expressed in its finality on the AP exam. You need to be able to uh, work between forms. Okay. Um, we'll just uh, set this one up. We've got a minute before the bell rings here. Uh, what rule do we start with? Chain. What's the outside? Our cosecant. So we've got uh, cosecant inverse of u. And the inside is e to the 3x plus 1. What is the derivative of arc cosecant? That's our derivative. That's just the, that's the rule, right? If you look at your notes, derivative of arc cosecant is negative 1 over Derivative e to the 3x plus 1. What's the derivative of 3x plus 1? 3, and then it's e to the 3x plus 1. That one was easy. We'll combine them together when we get back from lunch. Go get some brain food.
today I'll do yeah. and maybe to make it go on a bit. All right, it should be on. So we'll check and see what we're told. So yeah, we're producing. No. Okay, so we left off here. Uh, we set the chain rule. Now the last thing we have to do is multiply them together. So we multiply them together. Does anybody see what's going to happen? Yeah, so this root of the 3x plus 1, it's going to go into two places. It's going to go into this root squared, and it's going to go in here to this root. And so this root of the 3x plus 1 will be in the denominator. I'm sure you see what that will make now. So I'll uh, write it all out so we can see what that will make. Negative 3 to the root of the 3x plus 1 divided by the u is root to the 3x plus 1 to the square root of. If I say root of the 3x plus 1, what do I get? Root of that. Take it my word here that root of the three x plus one can cancel. So that will give me here here the square root of negative six x plus two minus one. So when our previous problem we haven't done a whole lot of reducing. Don't believe me. We we set up the boxes. I put in root of the u and root of the three x plus one. Root of the three x plus one is going to be root of the three x plus one minus one. So it's going to have to be root of the three x plus one minus one. Root of the three x plus one. 